Have you ever ran a SQL query that gave you a different output than you expected and you thought SQL might be broken? This happened to me a few years ago and I realized I was running SQL queries wrong for years. In this video, I'm gonna show you a common situation where you can write your SQL queries wrong without even realizing it, why it happens and how to fix it. Let's do it. Welcome back to The Query. My name is Kyle, and I'm here to help you build your data analyst skills and advance your career. Today, we're talking about a tricky situation that can happen anytime there's a null value in one of your columns. So let me show you a quick example of how this happened to me. So here we've got some sample Google Analytics data from our job board, the query.jobs that I've been working on. And each one of these rows is a page view. So Every time somebody hits a page on the website, it fires a page view event, and it shows the traffic source for a lot of the page views in this UTM source column. So I'll just show you the different UTM sources we have available. Most of them are null, but then some of them come from the newsletter, Google, different LinkedIn sources, and a bunch of other random stuff. So let's say for an analysis we were doing, we wanted to remove any of these UTM sources that were Google. So what you would first think to do is come here, type where UTM source is not equal to Google. Perfect, we have our data set ready to go. And then you go on and do your analysis and then you'd find at the end that you were missing a bunch of page views. So let's see what we might be missing here. I'm gonna go back to this group by and show you that if we put where UTM source is not equal to Google here, we're not getting Google, but we're also not getting any of the nulls. And so why does that happen? Why are we not getting the nulls? The nulls are not equal to Google, you would think. This has to do with how SQL evaluates what a null value is. A null is actually not data in itself, it's the absence of data. So whenever you do a comparison of anything related to null, it's gonna equal false. So how the where clause works is it evaluates all the conditions that you put into there as either true or false. And it goes through and says this and this and this, and it says, is this true? And is this true? Or is this true? And then it gives you the final output. And so when it evaluates something compared to a null value, which is the absence of data, it always evaluates to false. So anytime you wanna remove certain columns, and some of those columns in that column are null, how do we go about doing that without removing all the nulls? There's a few ways to do this, but the one that I like the best is to use a function called coalesce, which is a great function. I love saying the word coalesce, but how coalesce works is you put in a column name and then you can put in a bunch of other columns and then it'll take whichever one is the first non-null thing that you put in there. So you can put like, coalesce utm source utm source two then you could put like nothing if and it'll say like okay it'll take utm source and then if utm source is null it'll try to use this column instead and then if this is null it'll do this so it'll just keep cascading until it finds something that's not null and then that's what it'll return so we can use coalesce as sort of like a hack in this example. Instead of saying where UTM source is not equal to Google and having anytime this is a null, evaluate to false and it kick out all the nulls because none of the nulls are equal to or not equal to Google. What we can do is we can wrap this in a coalesce and if UTM source is null, just make it an empty string. So what it does is it kind of like hacks this and changes the null to an empty string. And an empty string can evaluate true or false against something else. So this empty string does not equal to Google. And so whenever this is null, this expression evaluates to true and it returns all the null values that we wanted. So let's just run this. We're getting way more rows, which is good. And then I'll just show you if we put this into our group by. That we're now getting the null values here as well as nothing that is equal to Google. 
So that's my favorite way to deal with this. Another way you can do it is instead of using coalesce, you can say where UTM source is not equal to Google source or UTM source is null. This is another way you could do this to accomplish the same thing. I've seen this written a lot of times in SQL queries. I don't really like this as much because there's two criteria and I just like having coalesce UTM source not equal to Google as the simplest and cleanest way to do this. But you can do it this way too if you can't remember the coalesce thing. So the key thing to remember here is anytime you're typing where something is not equal to something else in your SQL query, you need to make sure that column either doesn't have any nulls in it and you can just say not equal to whatever you want, or you need to wrap it in coalesce or say UTM source is not null. So anytime you're typing not equal to something else, remember this, that you need to factor in the null values or you're gonna get the wrong output from your query. SQL is not broken. It's never been broken. I've never seen it be broken, even though I thought for sure it might've been broken at a few different times in my life. So I hope you got something out of this video. This was something I banged my head against the wall on for a long time before I finally figured out what was wrong with my query. So I hope this helps prevent that from happening to you in the future. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.